Coming up, what exactly is an antibody and why are they so important? We'll explain. Plus, kids get honest and how they are really feeling at home. I kind of feel trapped. Sad and anxious, for sure. So we don't really do anything. And it's really boring. And the king is back. How this six-year-old went from the king of Shirley Temples to helping other kids in need. This is NBC Nightly News, Kids Edition. Welcome to another installment of Nightly News Kids Edition. I'm hoping you are doing well at home, and I mean it. It's really important to let people know you care about their health and happiness, especially right now. It feels like every text I send or get starts with, I hope you're well, and it means a lot to folks. Anyway, here in New York, we're still under a stay-at-home order, and so, except for walking Lucy or running out for food, I'm still in my apartment. I know some of you are living in states are starting to reopen, but regardless of where you live, it's a good idea to wear that mask in public, wash your hands a ton, and give people their space. That's six feet or more of social distancing. All right, a lot to get to, including what I am drinking today. I think you're going to like this. But first, let's get to our fact today. Did you know there are two types of COVID-19 tests available? There's a viral test, and that can be done either through the nose, the throat, or your saliva. And it tells if you are currently infected with the disease. Then there is what's called an antibody test, and they take a little bit of your blood for that. It tells you if you were previously infected, if you had the disease before. People are working as hard as they can to quickly develop these tests. Experts say they're fairly accurate, but with any test, they can never be 100% perfect. And speaking of antibody, you might have heard this word mentioned the past few weeks, and it got us thinking just of what exactly is an antibody and why is it so important. We received some questions from you asking the same thing, and we asked Dr. John Torres to explain. So I'm hearing a lot about antibodies. What's an antibody? What is an antibody testing? I hear it in the news always. So just what is an antibody? Well, antibodies are what our bodies use to fight off germs like coronavirus. Now picture your body with its own special army. When a virus gets inside our body, our immune system acts like an army and attacks the germs to get rid of them. It uses antibodies, kind of like soldiers that are specially trained to attack that one type of germ. But the first time a new germ like coronavirus gets inside our body, the immune system doesn't really know what to do with it. It takes a few days to teach these antibodies, those soldiers, to attack the virus and to get rid of it. But then, once the germ is gone, the antibodies go back into a kind of resting mode. The soldiers retreat, they wait, constantly watching to see if it shows up again at the ready to defend if needed. If the germ does show up again, then the body is ready with specially trained antibodies that are prepared to quickly get rid of it. One of the reasons some people get so sick with viruses like the coronavirus is because it does take a few days for our soldiers to learn how to fight off these new germs. So if someone has recovered from coronavirus, they do indeed have the antibodies. But since the virus is so new, we think it will protect people from getting it again, but we aren't sure for how long. That's why vaccine shots are so important to keep us healthy. Vaccines can trick our body into developing these specially trained soldier-like antibodies even before germs are around. So the first time it does see a new germ, it knows how to attack it and get rid of it before it makes us sick. Okay, so my name is Jay Clavex and I am from Smyrna, Georgia. Why do they need blood from people that have survived the coronavirus? And the reason why they use blood from someone who survived coronavirus is because the antibodies, those soldiers in that blood, can help someone else who is sick to fight off this germ until their body can build up its own army to fight it. All right, Dr. John Torres, thanks so much for walking us through that. And those graphics were great. They really helped us understand. We know there's a lot to take in right now, and you're at home trying to do this whole remote learning thing, but it's not the same as school. We know that. And I'm sure you're missing your classmates, and you're probably getting upset sometimes. It's okay. It's scary for us adults, too, and we get upset. Our Kate Snow wanted to hear from you guys to find out what you're feeling and what you can do at home to relieve some of the anxiety. How are you feeling? That's what we want to know. So we asked Charlie in New York, Cam in Chicago, Stella in California, and Matthew in North Carolina. I kind of feel trapped. 
because I'm seeing the same people over and over again. And I'm also sad because I can't see any friends, only I can see them on Zoom or FaceTime. I definitely miss like walking in the hallways with my friends and being on the bus after school. So sad and anxious for sure. So we don't really do anything. And it's really boring. Hey, we get it. You miss school, running around the playground, and your friends. There's no real schedule. You don't really know what to do. It kind of angers you, or angers me at least. Exactly. So when we talked, we included Anthony Pugliafico. He's a child psychologist. We may feel sad or scared or angry, and it could be really helpful to notice when we're feeling those things and sometimes even share those feelings with someone at home. Um, and sometimes just talking about those things can make us feel better. He also says you should decide what works. I usually try to get like two or three workouts a day. Is that is that more than usual? Definitely. My message to parents and kids would just be, you know, let's all keep being flexible and trying to keep things as normal as we can. And for getting that schoolwork done, the kids we talked to have advice. For some of my schoolwork, I FaceTime my friend so that we can do some of it together. Like for our vocabulary, we have flashcards, so we test each other. Instead of waiting to do your homework because you don't want to do it, you should just do it right away. I'm closer to straight A's than I've ever been. I think I have like four A's, two B's, so I'm just trying to pull those up. High five for that. Absolutely. <laughs> now this part, it's for the parents. So lean in, mom and dad. What do you wish the parents understood, Matthew? The TV that we do is like my parents' choice, but me and my brother would very much enjoy if we could just binge watch Family Guy for like <laughs> two hours while my parents go do something. We think he means kids need me time too. All right, Kate Snow, thanks very much for that. Finally, we want to shine a spotlight on another kid who is helping others in need right now. This six-year-old made a name for himself before the virus, and now his sweet tooth and this particular drink is paying off again for a good cause. He's got a strong palate for sweetness. Just enough grenadine, just enough ice, just enough ginger ale. You may know him as the Shirley Temple King. I give that 6.3 because it is very invigorating. Six-year-old Leo Kelly needs no introduction to his nearly 300,000 Instagram followers. Before the virus outbreak, he was traveling to restaurants near and far to sip and rate his favorite beverage, the classic Shirley Temple, of course. Three cheers, recyclable straw, good. I had a chance to meet the king himself back in February. It was my very first time trying this classic drink. Hmm. That's what Shirley Temple tastes like. That's pretty good. I would give that one 9.6. I mean, if it's really, really good. Leo's sweet tooth is now leading him to even sweeter things. Come and get your play dough. Yeah. The Shirley Temple King has been busy donating gift bags filled with snacks and toys to help kids in need during this tough time. Everybody once in a while has too much stuff. So I think helping others is a great way to recycle things. And it makes them happy too. This is awesome. With the help of the Bridgeport Rescue Mission, Leo has already sent out 100 bags to families nearby, hoping to deliver some smiles too. I think they're gonna be so excited as if it was like Christmas morning and they woke up and they're gonna be like so excited. One thing for certain, he's not only the Shirley Temple King, but the King of Kindness too. And joining us now from his home is Leo Kelly. Leo, thanks for joining us. It's great to see you again. Hey, do you plan on helping your community out more in the near future? Um, yes, I will do it. And I love giving back. It felt what it felt amazing. Yeah, it's terrific what you're doing. I know kids really appreciate it. Hey, before you leave, remember you taught me how to make a Shirley Temple. Can you can you tell the kids how to make one at home? Yes, I'd love to. 
So what you have to do is you take a glass cup because plastic, it doesn't really taste that good and it's bad for the environment. So then I take three or four ice cubes, ginger ale, not any lemon or lime soda, and then I take grenadine, make it yellow, make it red, not yellow. Then I take three cherries, and then I take a reusable straw. And sometimes, just for fun, I put an umbrella in there. And that's, that's it. Yeah, I forgot when you taught me that. I have too many cherries in mine, so I'm going to take one out. <laughs> Leo, it's great talking to you, buddy. You take care. You too. Well, that's going to do it for us today. We hope you learned something and also had a little bit of fun with us. Before we go, parents, just a reminder, if your son or daughter has a question, email us a video to nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com. And also, if they're celebrating a birthday at home, send us a photo, if you will. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please take care of yourself and each other.